So, you have a course you already teach and like. It might be science or social policy, business or biology. You already bring in global perspectives and have students working in teams. So what's really unique with this approach to teaching? First, you plan and teach the course with an international faculty partner. Second, your students work directly with students internationally. And third, your students learn through practice how to problem solve in virtual global teams. Then that becomes a human right. You know what I mean? Like we have to be really careful how we work that, yeah, especially because they're gonna be watching it and they don't I don't want to get our wires crossed. Yeah. I've designed and taught nearly two dozen collaborative online international courses with faculty partners in India, Africa, Southeast Asia, South America, and throughout the Middle East. And I coach faculty teams how to embed this teaching approach in their own courses in universities across the U.S. and internationally. Teaching this way dramatically changes what happens both inside and outside the classroom. So, how do you redesign your course into a COIL course? First, you need to find and then redesign part of your course with an international faculty partner. This can take at least a month and oftentimes several months. In looking for a partner, think of it more like eHarmony than Tinder. You're looking for someone that is a good mutual fit and someone you would enjoy and value working with again in another future course, not just do this as a one-time thing. So your university can help you with finding a partner utilizing current partner universities and there are other resources as well. You also don't need an exact match in course content between your two classrooms, just an overlap of shared assignments. And it's quite common to see partnerships that cross content disciplines. You just need at least four weeks in which students can work together on shared assignments with shared learning goals. The second big change in course design is having students work in small global teams. They collaborate on research and problem solving directly with their international partners. Now typically, each global team is composed of members from both countries, usually a total of five to seven students per global team. Designing the work group is grounded in four principles of project-based learning. First, student teams have an authentic, challenging, central problem to solve. Second, the central problems have competing solutions. Third, students investigate, reflect, and refine over time. And lastly, solutions require real action in a culminating project. So here's how I applied these principles in a course between students at my U.S. university and an Egyptian university focused on social movements for social change. The Egyptian professor and I selected four hotly contested social movements relevant to both countries. One of those issues was female harassment. Students in one of our eight global teams worked on strategies for reducing sexual harassment in Cairo following the most recent revolution. Another global team focused on sexual harassment at our U.S. University and designed a public awareness campaign for the campus presenting their recommendations to university officials. One global team came up with the idea of a campaign to create harassment-free zones in Tahrir Square, Cairo. Local businesses would agree to post window signs declaring their business as a harassment-free zone. Women would know then that they could go to those businesses for reporting and protection. Students worked with the local nonprofit in Cairo to shape the publicity around the campaign and they presented a joint paper of recommendations to that agency director. 
another global team focused on harassment at the U.S. University and designed a public awareness campaign for the campus and presented their recommendations to university officials. It took about 10 weeks to create the plans, refine them, and present the research. Global teams utilized the primary source experiences drawn from students in both countries to shape the recommendations for each global team. So, how does this change impact the activities that take place both inside and outside the classroom? Outside the classroom, students are doing live video chats with global team members. They're sharing ideas, questions, and research online, both live and asynchronously, in shared workspaces like Google Docs and in closed and private Facebook groups. They're watching teaching videos of recorded mini lessons my teaching partner and I produce. And then to talk very frankly about They're reading assigned articles related to the core content and writing reflection and research papers. They're presenting their findings to authentic audiences who can impact the problem. Roughly half of the assignments relate to understanding the core content and half relate to demonstrating high quality communication and group process skills. Now, inside the classroom, the focus is on student interaction, practice, and debriefing. Lectures are really short, designed to stimulate debate. I show examples of high quality group and communication work that's been submitted by students. Then the students immediately practice in class those principles of group work, virtual communication, and cross-cultural communication that they are learning from these examples. Global teams are meeting in class and they're debriefing global team problems, followed oftentimes by role-playing in teams to try out new approaches to address the issues and then debriefing about what they just experienced. Sometimes in class we do fishbowl exercises where one global team works in the center and those outside the fishbowl are taking notes and then offering ideas on group process and content. Global teams meet in class, then record and post brief videos that summarize their discussions. Then they send it virtually to their global team members in the other country for further reactions and deeper dialogue. So in designing assignments, I start with low stakes role playing and easier group problem solving assignments to give students practice. Engaged practice is valued more than correctness at this early stage. And over time, the students engage in deeper and more complex research and reflection and problem solving, leading ultimately to investigating and posing solutions to the central problem of each group. And this concludes then in a culminating project before an authentic audience other than the class or the instructor. Now, I find it essential that students see me as a student in the process. The truth is, I'm in a two-person team as well with the other professor. So throughout the course, I share challenges that I'm having as the two of us are working together and what we're doing to overcome them. Particularly hard things that come up for us while we're working across cultures. I talk about mistakes and assumptions I'm making and how it gets corrected, like understanding unspoken cultural norms that can impact interactions and the very real power dynamics that can come into play when problem solving between two countries with unequal political and economic power come together. Lastly, high performing work groups understand the importance of group stages of development one of which is closure. A common assignment I give is to have the elements of good closure, appreciation, recognition of regrets, celebration of accomplishments, and saying goodbye, and design a way to do it that fits their style. So students do this both within their global team, figure out closure, and where appropriate, in a class-to-class -class event. 
Yay. <laughs> Teaching so students are practicing problem solving in their field in virtual global teams is challenging for students. And it's definitely more work for the professor. Yet, I'm convinced that teaching in this way gives students the critical real-world practice they need for today's diverse, global, and virtual problem-solving work world.